I went to the bank, I was gonna deposit about a grand, but I said, you know what? Let me deposit, let me deposit 500. Let me hurry up and take this money out and put it away for somebody comes and tries to pull up. <laughs> I, I went to the bank to deposit $500. I put 500 into the machine and the machine ate my money up. This is not it, this is the other half. The machine ate my money up and now, I am without that $500 until Monday. They gave me a slip. Bank is closed right now, and they're gonna be closed Sunday as well too. And I thought to myself, dang, if I needed that money today, that would be a true inconvenience. I'm not gonna have it tomorrow, and I have to wait. So I've just experienced an inconvenience. I've just experienced a setback. And the Holy Spirit told me, go record a video. Ladies and gentlemen, you are now tuned in to Jaja's Mic, home of the world's toughest leaders. It's a pleasure to have you. I'm a firm believer that your life will be changed. My leaders, Lord, let me speak to my leader today. Come on, let's be as transparent as you want me to be and speak to this leader right here. My leaders, pray with me. Dear Lord, Heavenly Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, Lord, I'm just immensely thankful for this leader that is here today. Father God, thank you for giving me the strength to yield. I wanted to do something else with my day. You just stopped me in my tracks. You arrested me and said, speak to your leaders today. So Father God, I don't know who I'm speaking to, but I just pray that you cover them today. Allow them to know that we are all in this boat. Give me the audacity to speak even deeper on the message of trials. Because somebody's going through a trial. It's not fair. It's inconvenient. It inconvenienced them. But Father God, allow me to know the words that I must say. Father God, get Give me the wisdom, Jesus Christ, and the transparency to open up right now. This leader's life will not be the same because there's gonna be a comfort level this season coming their way. A new comfort and a new peace so that they can know that God is holding them and loving them and with them even now where it seems like they're in the desert alone. So Father God, thank you for this message. Guide me. Let me get out of your way and into Yahweh. <laughs> It's in Jesus' mighty name that we pray. Amen. My leaders, my leaders, my leaders. I got something special for you all today. And it's out of my journal today. Very personal this morning. Personal time with God. And this is also inspired by Daniel King. If you're watching this, man, I appreciate you and your video for just speaking about what's on the journal. You know what I mean? A lot of times I ask God, you know, what can I speak to my leaders about? What are these principles? And God showed me, you know, there's principles he's always given me because I'm reading my word, I'm spending time with God, and it's not really hard. I just have to look literally into my notes because I get a lot of revelation. And today was powerful because last message, if you were tuned in, we were talking about what trial is going to counsel your faith, right? And so today, I just want to talk to you all about a trial that I'm actually facing in my life right now. It's very personal to me. And if I read my notes, you know, I said, I honestly feel as though I am facing a trial of having this pause in my career. Okay. Last night, I had a dream last night and I was abruptly woken up. And I said, last night, I asked myself and I thought to myself, how on earth will I ever take care of a family? I, how could I possibly take care of a wife? My needs are being taken care of, but it seems like I'm barely getting by. This actually concerns me. There is a trial I truly feel taking place in that area. You know, it's a, it's a relationship trial. I feel love 
is both coming and I feel it's going. Who are my true relationship companions? Better yet, how can I love people better instead of waiting for everyone to come love me? Questions I asked, questions I asked. And so I asked, can I write? And I said, you know, this is what uh, social media existence has taught me. You know, it is only recently that I have been learning to show love to other people in their platform. And this may be because I truly desire for people to be encouraged in the things that they are doing and pursuing. And I'm also inspired to simply share love and to encourage. And as I'm reading this, a scripture hit me very vividly, okay? Because think about what, I, what did I ask? What is my trial? And my trial has been relationships, it's been career. These are like the most specific things in my life right now. And I read in the book of Peter, I'm gonna put the verse that I read today. It says, uh, for you know that it was not with perishable things such as silver or gold that you were redeemed from the empty way of life handed down to you from your forefathers, but with the precious blood of Christ, a lamb without blemish or detail. So here's how I'm gonna connect this message, my leader. And I'm gonna actually do a little cutting in this one because I wanna, I wanna stay on one specific potent topic. And it's the first one, actually. And it's about careers. When I finished reading my notes, what I realized was that in my pursuit for a career that, that felt fulfilling, okay, I literally had to yield and be inspired by the Holy Spirit. In my last video, I talked about trials and I talked about careers, okay? And even though I've chosen to walk with God, it is not a walk that has been without its own trials. It's not a walk that's been without its, its own tribulations. It's been a walk that has been difficult, that has been tough. And so when you're reading James and you're reading Peter, and they're literally sending these words of encouragement to the, the other leaders who are actually choosing to follow God, what you see is there's a need for this level of encouragement. And it's so funny because as I'm sitting here reading Peter, Peter talks about how don't be discouraged or feel like you're on an island of your own when you're faced with such trials. We're all going through. We're all wondering if, yo, I wanna get to that next stage in my life and I just need God to show himself. Why does it feel like the route that I chose is not leading us, uh, leaving as much fruit like everybody else? Like every, everywhere I look around, there's people making it. You know what I mean? There's people making it on YouTube. There's people making it in their in their career after they finish writing their book. There's people making money after they got their degree. There's people succeeding, but dang, and they're starting their families, and they got kids. You know, me, I'm like, yo, God, I'm fighting for you. You know, at least I believe I'm doing the work you called me to do. I don't question it. I don't doubt it. And it's like, yo, God, why? Why is it in me that I battle and I wrestle with the future of a family? You know, the future of being able to hold a kingdom up with this with this route that I'm taking. Because the doubt, where does the doubt come? The fruit. There's a fruit that I'm expecting to see. And it's like there's this inconvenience that happens because you know that if I do what the world says will make me money today, I know I'm a whoo, I can have all of those things. It's like when we look at the wilderness story and we look at the Holy Spirit and we look at Jesus. And when the devil came to Jesus the second time, the second temptation, he offered Jesus an insight into seeing all the kingdoms of the world. God, I will give you all the kingdom of the world. Instant gratification. It's the instant. And why would it be 
alluring for Jesus to have all the kingdoms of the world in an instant after he bowed down to the devil. Why? Because because Jesus, if you just bow down to me, Satan, you can influence the entire world right now. <laughs> I'll put you in position to influence the entire globe right now. But even Jesus Christ said no. That is not the route. That is not the way. And so my trial is, my leader, can you just poetically feel where I'm going with this? My trial has been, oh, Jesus, I've seen the opportunities. I've, I've been asked to be a part of the organizations in the groups, but my spirit said no. I've seen the routes that would bring instantaneous, you know, wealth and finances because of my ability to speak and my ability to sell. And my spirit said no. And here I sit following Jesus Christ in the the thought of take no thought for tomorrow for tomorrow has enough worries of its own plague me because I'm like I really can't worry about tomorrow if I'm following Jesus Christ <laughs> hey the Holy Spirit is speaking to me right now wow I really can't take no thought for tomorrow if I'm following Jesus Christ I must be centered on today or I'm gonna have worry. My leader, this is crazy. I just went to the bank right now, okay? And I went to the bank and I deposited money, okay? I went to the bank, I was gonna deposit about a grand, but I said, you know what? Let me deposit, let me deposit 500. Let me hurry up and take this money out and put it away for somebody comes and tries to pull up. <laughs> if they pull up, I'm about to, y'all about to see me scrap it. Oh, I ain't no judge, I had hands. Hey man, I grew up in Southwest Ailey, Texas, man, Houston. Shout out to Toby. I, I went to the bank to deposit $500. I put 500 into the machine and the machine ate my money up. This is not it, this is the other half. The machine ate my money up and now I am without that $500 until Monday. They gave me a slip. Bank is closed right now, and they're going to be closed Sunday as well, too. And I thought to myself, dang, if I needed that money today, that would be a true inconvenience. I'm not going to have it tomorrow, and I have to wait. So I've just experienced an inconvenience. I've just experienced a setback. And the Holy Spirit told me, go record a video. I didn't know what I was going to speak about. And I realized in that scenario, that feeling, I don't have the instant gratification of enjoying my finances. My finances are being delayed. And the Holy Spirit showed me this is a representation of your journey right now. There are many of you leaders right now that are facing a trial that just feels inconvenient. Like, Lord, it's inconvenient if I do this. Because I know the statistics in doing this. I, I know the slowness in this process. Why I've experienced it for years, or I've seen others experience the same thing. It's the inconvenience. Why should I take this route? Why should I continue to trek on? This is the walk with Jesus. This is the walk for the apostles who back in the day were facing trials, rebuke, sometimes death because of this inconvenience it almost felt like it was inconvenience to follow god but the truth is peter says something very uncommon like we need to find this joy in this space of today my dear, i don't know what it is you're going through okay i don't know where you find your own trials and what you feel is should be owed to you. But I want to encourage you that God has taken all of this into consideration. Kind of like the $500 that I just, that I have to wait to get back. It's like God knows right now you don't need that income. Like you're not even going to need it tomorrow. You're probably going to spend it on something you weren't supposed to spend it on. My leader, if you had the power and the influence you probably would have used it in a way you were not supposed to use it. 
I need you to wait real quick so I can give you the knowledge and I can give you the insight and I can give you the wisdom of what to do when you get into that scenario. Ja, you're, you're just learning how to lead right now. If I had given you a family back then, you would have led from the wrong principles. <laughs> You would have led from your own understanding. You would have led from the power of the finances in your wallet. My leader, years ago, I couldn't have lost $500 or been inconvenienced from my money. I would be throwing tables. <laughs> I'd be flipping tables. Don't talk to me till I get that money back. You know? Now I lose it for a time. I'm like, I'm cool. This is what this perseverance does in our race as we fix our eyes on Jesus Christ. You don't even know, my leader, how much you have grown in this time period. You don't know. You do not know. You couldn't fathom the growth. You couldn't fathom what's happening when you are going with without. That season is coming. Those funds are going to get released. That wife is going to get released my ladies that husband is going to get released your season to mother children is going to be released your season to boss up and own that business is going to be released you know my mother she's been trying to have a business for years shout out to my mom if you're watching this i love you <laughs> she been trying to have a business for years praying and that's a prayer warrior. You mean my mother, that's a prayer warrior. She loves God. That's how I really truly came to Jesus Christ. And she's been wanting the business for years. And I kept asking God, God, why haven't you released this business to her? I feel like she's waited decades, just decades. God, what is, what is going on? You know, and I realized something. I said, dang, God, you know when people are ready. You know what you're having my mother actually focus on. You know what you're building in here. And what I've seen is this perseverance. This level of endurance over a decade to believe that this is coming. Even today, she speaks like that business is about to be here tomorrow. I'd be like, whoo, even a decade later, she still believes. Wow. Do you know the perseverance that happens? It's the Christian waiting for Jesus Christ. It's been how many? How many years have gone by? And we still believe that Jesus is returning. It's that perseverance that helps you endure so that you're lacking nothing. It makes you stronger. But what does it also do? It builds your faith. It makes you have to trust God. It, it proves how much you trust Jesus. Because you can say, hey, God, where my family at? <laughs> Where my business at? Where are those things I wrote down on my on my New Year's resolution? Where is it? I wrote this thing down a decade ago. I ain't seen it. I'm about to go out there and I'm going to get it myself. And your faith will prove this. It will prove what will you stand on? Who will you go to? What will you believe about your experience? My leader, will you rely on your own strength? Or will you go and continue to have the patience to endure this journey. I don't know what you're actually waiting for, my lady. But similar to me, there's fears. There's still doubts. You're only human. But you know what I want to encourage you is to trust. Even though I may, I may wonder, like, man, guy, where, where are these funds going to come? How can I, how can I have a family? How can I take care of a family? I'm trying to take care of myself. Yes, I'm doing, all, I'm doing the work that you've called me to do. I'm helping, I'm praying. I'm pushing people. I'm curing their minds from suicidal thoughts and depression. I'm helping people find their goals and their calling. My God, even then, yo, but I know you promised me more. At what point will this be released to me, Jesus? At what point will you find this soothing? But you know what, God? 
Don't even worry about that question. I'm following you to the end. My leaders, it's coming. It's coming. But just because somebody, something has been on a uh, standby does not mean that God is not working within that standby period, even if it's been a decade, my leaders. Like God's timing is not our timing. The word says, for his thoughts are not our thoughts. His ways are not our ways. So take time to notice the beauty of what actually been happening throughout this time. Man, I, I'll tell you, for example, even though I don't have a family of my own yet, I have a family, but not, not a wife, not children and kids. Even though I don't have that, man, my patience has grown. My, my love for people has grown. My level of humility has grown. My level of my temperance. I'm not a hothead like I used to be. I take out my, my anger and my passion on these videos. <laughs> you know, while I'm running or exercising. I've learned to be a better me. And shout out to uh, Mike Brown's wife. She spoke about um, self-love, you know, and she spoke about how we need to learn to love ourselves. We have to love ourselves because we can't love anybody else if we don't love ourselves. We can't love anybody else. We can't even accept the love of God if we don't learn how to love and how to receive. And I thought that was so powerful. Shout out to you, Jasmine, for doing that video. If y'all haven't seen it, y'all, I'm gonna leave that link in the description below. But love yourself. And through these years of waiting, I've learned how to love myself. God is like, look, I can't give you a family or kids if you don't know how to love. You're gonna drive your family down. You need to learn how to love me. You need to learn how to receive this love. You know, you need to know how to be in love with yourself during this period of isolation. You know, I need to realize what God is doing for you during this time. I'm telling you, there's a reason, my leader. There is a definite reason. Stay encouraged. Stay encouraged. Let me read that scripture to y'all again, okay? Hear this out. Hear it. For you know that it was not with perishable things such as silver or gold that you were redeemed from the empty way of life handed down to you from your forefathers, but with the precious blood of Christ, a lamb without blemish or detail. Remember something. When we came to Christ, it wasn't because, and I can almost guarantee, it wasn't because of some physical thing that was in your life that made you like, oh, God is real. It was a spiritual inspiration. It came from the Holy Spirit. You were called by the Father. It started in the Spirit, and it must remain in the Spirit. And the only way for you to continue to do what God is calling you to do, you must remain in the Spirit. And when you stay in the Spirit, this is when you can actually endure the gap between where you are now and where you wish to go. The gap, my leader, is endeared in the spirit. <laughs> Let's pray. Dear Lord, Heavenly Father, who in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, Father God, there is a leader today, right now, watching this video, and you have given them so much promise. You put it in their spirit. They've written it down. It was Holy Spirit inspired. They know it didn't come from themselves. God, it came from you. Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, Father Lord, I just ask that you once again make that Holy Spirit fall on them afresh. Make it anew. Give them this new invigoration. Give them this new fire, this new love to continue to wait and give them the spirit to know that they must stay within the spirit. Give them the power to continue to pray. Give them the ability to wait even longer. Give them the strength to trust you, God. They release it back to you, Father. Father, we, we surrender. God, I surrender my expectations. I surrender what I wish that I had right now. Or I give it to you. And I realize I don't need it this season. Father God, all I need is you. I need to focus on you. I need to chase you. 
I need to pursue you, God. I need to understand what it means to truly worship you. I need to know what it means to have no other God before you. Renew our hearts, God. Renew our spirits, Father God. We surrender. Lord, our hearts get weak because we're just human of the flesh. Lord, we want what we want. But Lord, you know what's best. Father God, please remind us that you know what's best. You're working on us. And Father God, I just, I declare a covering over this leader. Will you cover them, oh God? Will you lead them, Father? Will you protect them? Above all else, will you allow them to experience your peace, dear Lord? This is a new season where they are going to continue to be lifted up. I see a new grace falling on them right now. Oh, Jesus. I see a new dream falling on them right now. Father, I see you releasing some things that they wrote down. I see you saying, I trust you now. It's time. Will you allow us to receive your blessing in due season? Give us the strength to commit to you fully. Lord, we apologize for our worries. We will never doubt you again. Father God, we will remove the spirit of double-mindedness. Father God, we love you. And it's in Jesus' mighty name that we pray. Amen. My leader, God loves you. Keep waiting. Your trial is only a subscription like Netflix. <laughs> it's about seven days and it's about to be gone. Trust God. And it's a firm, and I'm a firm believer that your life will be changed. Talk to you. We are. Mm -hmm. <laughs>